Good evening, everyone. I'm Shannon Rutherford. This is the May 23rd plan and zoning meeting. I will start with roll call and then turn it over to our chair. Uh, Patrick Carrier. Here. Uh, we have Mike Rabolas, I will know for the record, is absent. Scott, Scott Halstead is absent. Matt Hutbogner. Here. Ina St. James. Here. Liz Sanford. Here. James Ratcliffe. Here. And Mike Walsh. Here. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's Ines and James. Welcome to Town of Farmington Plan and Zoning Meeting, May 23rd, 2020. Um, James and Mike Walsh, both of you will be voting members this evening. All right. Yes. And then uh, with uh, Scott being absent, Matt H., will you, be the, will you do the honor of being the acting secretary this evening? Yes, happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's start with the legal notice then. Thank you. So notice is hereby given that the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will hold a hybrid, in-person, and online public hearing Monday, May 23rd, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the following applications. Amber and Michael Spirito, application for special permit to raise 14 hens for property located at 7 Orchard Road, R20 zone. And Patricia Ravel and David Donaldson application for special permit for expansion of home in the Ridgeline Protection Area for property located at 17 Pinnacle Ridge Road, R40 zone. Interested parties are encouraged to participate in this hybrid public hearing. Participation in person is at One Monteith Drive, Town Hall, Town Council Chambers, or online participation is via the link to the meeting on the Town of Farmington's website listed here. A copy of this proposal is online listed at the link in the notice or by calling the planning department at Farmington Town Hall at 860-675-2325. Dated at Farmington, Connecticut, this sixth day of May, 2022, Town Plan and Zoning Commission and St. James Chair. Thank you. All right, so we have a few new business items to get through and then a public hearing. The first item in front of us is an application uh, from Loretto Sign Group regarding an application for property at 5 Mill Street. And we have someone online, Shannon? Uh, we actually have someone oh, okay. here with us this evening. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Come on up to the podium. I can scroll through as you're ready. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm Allison Ibbotson with Laura Tano Sign Group at One Tremco Drive, Terryville. And also, I do have people on the call as well, a representative from Dollar Tree, um, which is uh, Jeremy Strivola, and also a representative from Anchor Signs, uh, Valerie O'Kane. And this first page here shows all the locations of the proposed signs. Sign A is a wall sign, which is facing west. And the total square footage is 39.83 square feet. 24 inch letters. And then there's a matching set on the left elevation facing north. And this is uh, sign C, which is a reface from the Walgreens blade sign to now read Dollar Tree. And this is also the stone work is already there for the monument sign. We're just adding the letters to both sides of the monument. And then we're reskinning the existing awnings. Okay. We're all set? I am all set. Thank you. Thank yep. you, Allison. All right, commissioners. Uh, let's start with questions. Matt? Yeah, just an administrative one for me. I think this came in one way, but it was presented differently at the ADRC and they approved that. Is that correct? Correct. This reflects the changes that ADRC agreed to. So, yes, they did. They worked really hard with ADRC last Thursday evening. And reduced the signs, got it centered, and uh, they're happy with the changes that you see here. Great, no, that, that makes sense, I appreciate that. that that's good, no, no questions. Thank you, Patrick? Uh, I was gonna ask the same question, so thank you, no questions. All right, Liz? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, my one question is, um, the color is the standard Dollar Tree color? Yes, it's their standard brand. Okay. Yep. Kind of a bright green. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you, and James? Uh, just to confirm, um, non-illuminated, all of them, correct? 
so the the letters on the building are not illuminated. Um, the there is existing lighting on the blade sign, which will remain the same. Okay, thank you. No more, yep. no more questions. I'm going to provide one point of note on that. Just there are for the previous Walgreens sign, there had been two spotlights mounted on the canopy, uh, pointing up towards the building signs. The spotlights are being removed and they're putting an LED bar on. It'll be 4,000 Kelvin is a color temperature maximum. And they're also including a dimmer switch so that if there's issue with the intensity, then they will be able to adjust it. Awesome. And that's for both wall mounted signs. And that was an addition that happened on Thursday evening. Thanks for the clarification. Absolutely. All set, James? All set. All right, and Mike Walsh. No questions. Okay, I do not have any questions. Um, my questions were resolved with the ADRC comment. All right, so um, thank you for all the work um, and uh, complying with the request from ADRC. I think uh, we're probably ready to vote on it unless we have last minute questions. No? Okay. So I need a motion and a second, please. Uh, Patrick Carrier, I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the, the, uh, sorry, the sign application for Dollar Tree by Loretto Sign Group at 5 Mill Street. I second. James okay. Radcliffe. I'm oh, sorry. Everyone know what we're voting on? All good? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Pretty unanimous. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, next uh, item in front of us is an application from Scott's Townline Mobile, 435 Main Street. Yes, and this presenter is online. Okay. Right. Carolyn, uh, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself, please, and your address for the record, and then I will scroll through your presentation uh, as you request. Good evening, uh, my name is Carolyn Parker. My address is 3 Lorion Avenue, Worcester, Massachusetts, 01606. Okay. Okay, go ahead with your presentation. Welcome. All right. So um, basically, we were in front of you um, in 2020 for another mobile station at 244 Farmington Avenue um, to install what we call the synergy components at the mobile gas station. Um, so this is similar to the other one where we're gonna have two waves and then two blades, and then we'll have koalas, and then there will be number wedges that will be coming off the side of the columns to let people know what uh, pump they're at. Okay, pretty straightforward. I don't know if you have any questions. Shannon, this is Farmington or Unival? Hang on a second. I'm just thinking. I gotta think. For it's right. It's the Farmington Town Line. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. 435 Main Street. Yeah, we've been them all. That's why. Okay. I've got them on both both sides of town. So. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm sorry. I'm so confused. Which where are we talking? So 435 Main Street. I believe it's at the um, it's at the split where. Yeah. Oh. It's down okay. towards Plano. Oh, okay. Now I know. I was yeah. trying to figure it out. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. All right, um, commissioners, questions, Matt. Yeah, just one for me. Just, can you just confirm there's no advertisements as part of this application? Yes, that was uh, stated. I read the uh, comments. Um, there will not be any advertisement. Great, thank you. No, no further questions. Patrick? And yeah, I'm reading here. It said no, so no illumination is proposed and no LED signage. So nothing is illuminated. It's all extra. It's there's no illumination at all. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a curiosity question. What are the koala? What are the purposes of the koalas? Also, by the way, love the name. Right? <laughs> yeah, because um, they're hugging the column. Um, yeah. So basically what they're doing is they're trying to take all the, um, you know, the uh, stop your engine, you know, shut off your engine, all this other stuff, taking it off the dispenser and putting it onto the koalas. So it's, um, you know, your safety, your safety things. I have something, um, I, I didn't include it, but I, I can show. Um, 
it wasn't part of my application, but if you see, if you, I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but uh, it'll basically have your safety information, no smoking, shut off your engine, that type of stuff. Okay. So they're taking it off the dispenser and putting it there. Okay, well, seems clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and James? No questions. And Mike? No questions. I do not have any questions either. Seems pretty straightforward. All right, um, I need a motion and a second for a vote, please. Oh, Liz Sanford. I move that uh, we accept the sign application for the mobile um, from Scott's. Approve, I said it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, let me start all over again. I move that um, we approve the sign application for the mobile from Scott's Townline Mobile at 435 Main Street. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, unanimous. Thank you, have Thank a great you. night. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. Moving right along. Um, next item is application from Farmington Board of Education for an expansion to IAR cafeteria. Good evening. Um, was here last April, uh, bringing you conceptual plans for an expansion to the Irving Robbins cafeteria, which passed referendum. Um, I, I'm going to interrupt. We need your, your name and oh, you can use your work address work for address. the record. Oh, sorry. For the record. Sorry. Uh, Sam Kilpatrick, uh, director of school facilities, um, one Monteith drive, Farmington, Connecticut. Welcome. So I was here, uh, last year, uh, presenting conceptual plans for the Irving Robbins cafeteria. Uh, which passed referendum later in April. Um, at this point, we have design um, construction documents ready. Uh, they've started the process of review uh, within the town um, staff. Um, any notes that have come forward were um, will easily be able to take care of within the project. Uh, there's no setback issues or anything else um, with this. So it's a, approximately 1,850 square foot uh, addition. Uh, the goal was to get 260 addition, um, capacity within the cafeteria so that we could go to three lunch waves. Uh, we were able to accomplish that within the square footage. Um, well, if there's anything else uh, I can add for that. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, we'll go through the questions. Thank you, Sam. All right. Uh, Matt, questions? Uh, just, just one. Um, how many students per, per lunch wave? Uh, we were able to accomplish 264 okay. seats, okay. I believe. Okay, great. No, I didn't have any other questions, thank you. I'm sorry, it was 268. 268, just... great, thank you. Additional or total? Total, so currently it's 160. Got it, thanks. So you're going from four lunch waves to three? Yes. Got it. And Patrick? Um, I mean, so one question is, it, I see there was comments from engineering um, and you said these have been taken care of, I guess they're just on, on uh, drainage and a light pole. The design team has reviewed all the notes and, and take no exception. They, they said none of them are any issue. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to take care of them. Okay, thank you. So I'm working with town staff, right? right. Okay. Uh, Liz? Um, the only other thing, my question is, is the size of the patio going to be reduced? Are, are, are you, it is... That's where the addition is going, is that correct? That is where the addition is going and it will, be ha it will have to be reconfigured um, due to budget constraints. We're gonna try and save what we can of, of what's there for the patio stone uh, and, and reuse that in a, in a reconfiguration around the new addition. Okay. Well, uh, the, the improvement there is that we'll have a concrete slab underneath it. Um, right now it's on, on sand. Ah, okay. Well, no, it sounds great. And so kids don't have to eat at 10.30 probably a good move to get through lunch waves. It will be appreciated for sure. Uh, James? No questions. And Mike? No questions. I do not have any questions either. Um, it sounds like it's there's a need and um, like uh, Liz said, I will be appreciated by all. Okay, so you're working with town staff. Um, unless we have last minute questions, who wants to make a motion and a second? James Ratcliffe, I'll make the motion to approve 
the site plan application for the addition to the cafeteria um, by the Farmington Board of Education at 20 Wolf Pit Road, IAR. Patrick Carrier, I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. You're all set. Sam, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. AMG Retail. Um, it's a modification of a prior special permit for ours. Who do we have? I'm supposed to have Samantha. Let me see if I can find her online anywhere. <clears throat> I'm not seeing her on the phone at the moment. We can um, hold on this one and then come back. I did exchange emails with her as recently as this morning, I believe. Okay, so we'll move on and yeah, that's fine. All right, the next item is a uh, application, let's see here, from BHNV 231 LLC. <clears throat> Uh, yes, Frank Cathcart okay. is here with us. Good evening. Hello. Frank Cathcart, C A T H C A R T, 231 Farmington Avenue. Farmington is my office address. This is an application to modify a special permit, which dates from 2001. The property is in a PR zone, and the special permit for medical offices was 7,200 square feet slash eight doctors. Um, after submitting the initial application and speaking with the town planner's office, we um, well resubmitted some documentation and the net of it is that we are reducing the request for square footage from the initial down to a figure of totaling 10,045 square feet. I, for me anyway, who was mathematically impaired, the best way for me to look at it was to take the total square footage of the building, which is 38,768 square feet, deduct from that the medical office space, both occupied and proposed, and that comes out to 10,045 square feet, the difference being 28,723 square feet for non-medical and vacant space. Then taking the parking requirements for those square footage figures, coming up with required parking for the medical 67, the non-medical 128, totaling 195 parking spaces. Right now we have 196 parking spaces. So we just fit into the parameters for parking for um, the space. Um, so that's again, mathematically how we came up with the request for the 10,045. And it just happens to fit in with the vacancies that we have for which we have all of a sudden two proposed tenants for medical usage. Right now there's an endodontist, a doctor, a dentist, excuse me, endodontist, dentist, and a, uh, they share space, but one's a PhD and one's a, um, not credentialed, or I don't know what her credential is, um, mental health services. Um, they're proposed, and we have a lease in place now with a neuropsychologist who's doing a build out. And the two tenants who are looking at space right now, one's a chiropractor. <clears throat> excuse me, and the other is a pediatric dentist. Um, as far as the number of doctors or treating people is concerned right now, there are five. The pediatric dentist is a solo, the chiropractor is a solo, and the neuropsychologist, quite honestly, I'm not sure. We know there's one PhD. Um, he has an office in Cheshire. This is kind of a satellite or additional office. Um, we're anticipating that there won't be any more than he, as the full doctor, if I look at the regs, it says part-time doctors, you can 
put two or three together to come up with a full-time 40 hour. We believe that that's what it's gonna be. Um, so in addition to the additional square footage, um, and I kind of did this on a pro rata basis, uh, we would ask that the uh, number of doctors be up to 12 to go along with the square footage. Um, the floor plan, which the architect <clears throat> drew up for us is on the, the monitor right now, uh, showing the three stories of the building, the uh, broken down by color into the occupied non-medical, occupied medical, proposed medical, and vacancies. Um, one of the vacant spaces just today, in fact, is being leased to an attorney. Um, the other two were in the process of negotiating and they're being held in abeyance until uh, the commission decides on this application because the new ones would put us over the 7,200. Okay. Shannon, I was gonna ask you if you can show us the, which building this is. You're doing your math for us? I'm doing that, you know I'm gonna yes, ask I was you. just checking right. the number of doctors. I can, I don't know if I dropped an arrow in on this one. I can easily bring this up. Yeah, let me just go online to our, um, thank you. Our GIS, just give me one sec. Sorry, I did not get a chance to do that for. It's okay. What you'll see on the map is that the Red Cross building, which is if you're facing the building yep. is to the left, actually the property almost surrounds 231, okay. extends around the back and wraps around. And then if you're looking at the building on the right, on the road, there's a small parcel that's owned by the state of Connecticut. Okay. And actually on the other side where the Farmington building is, there's actually another very small plot that's labeled on the GIS Netco. So this is 231 is up on the screen and across from it is Lowman's Plaza. Okay. So the uh, yeah. building is at a traffic signal. Yes, yeah, so I forgot to mention, so I apologize. A, there is a traffic light at the, at the property. From a, a traffic standpoint, there's no concern from, there's no exterior changes. The only concern was making sure there was sufficient parking. Yep. And the number of doctors is okay within our regulations? So, so I just did the math out real quick. The 10,045 square feet would be the total medical. So the 7,200 that was previously approved plus the um, reduced request presented this evening is 2,845 to give us a total of 10,045 square feet at 150 um, square, square footage per space uh, requires 67 spaces. So the regulation says each doctor, there shall be um, six spaces allocated for each full-time doctor, yep. which would really be 11 full-time doctors rather than the 12 that are requested. I think I came out at 11.6, so I rounded up. <laughs> we don't round up with parking. <laughs> <laughs> That's Caught me. It's all good. All right, so we're so. good, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this revised, they, right, they've, right. Um, Mr. Cathcart and their architect worked with uh, Bruce and I over the last three, four business days to modify the request and reduce it so that it's zoning compliant. Okay. Thank you. Yes, those are great words. Thank you. Zoning compliant, right? I know. Thank you for the presentation. Um, so do you have more to add or I can turn it over? That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, commissioners, Matt, questions? Yeah, no, I, I follow the updated square feet and the updated number of doctors. So the difference between the 10,000 square feet today versus the 12,000. So what's going in that sort of 2,000 or 2,800 difference? Or is it still just open at this point? It's vacant. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay. Um, no, I think I'm good. Thank you. Right. There, are two, there will be two vacant spaces left in the building. Right, but right. there's sufficient parking to tenant them as general office. Right, they, they do not, not have not to remain. Right, in order to accommodate this 
medical use, they do not have to remain vacant. Right. No, understood. Okay. Okay, good. That, that's what I was just trying to clarify too. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick, questions? Well, yeah. So what happens if the number of doctors do change? So we, so he's approved for, let's say he's Eleven. approved. It's for a certain number, which is right. 12. Mm -hmm. um, does he have, do they have to come back or how does that work? So if they change this, the square footage of medical office or the number of full-time doctors, um, typically number of full-time doctors, we're not necessarily going right. to catch Right. And, and it does say that if they are part-time, you can have, mm -hmm. you know, one doctor that's working two days a week and another doctor working three days a week, they, they count as one. Right. Um, so that is the way it's worded in the reg. We're not necessarily going to yeah. uh, be aware of that unless there starts to be a notable parking issue. Mm -hmm. um, the square footage we will because building permit and tenant fit outs typically will Typically, there'll need to be a tenant fit out. There'll be enough changes that warrant a building permit. It'll come through our office, which is where this started. Mm -hmm. No more questions. Thanks. Thank you. Liz? Uh, no, no questions. Thank you. No questions. Oh, and Mike? No questions. Okay. Um, do we need to, with our motion, do we need to include the 12? And or does it If the commission has a preference, yes, please. Do we? Yeah, why not? Okay, yeah, all right. Okay, so um, everyone know what we're uh, voting on? Okay, I need a motion and a second, please. Uh, I'll, I'll go. All I'll right. Finish okay. on here. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the modification of prior special permit approval to increase medical office space and weight. Wait, well, we don't need to waive parking requirement anymore, right? Is that correct? Right. I'm not waiving anything. <clears throat> so, so my motion is to modify the prior special permit approval to increase medical office space from, and I'll just read the, the numbers here, right? Seven seven thousand two hundred square feet to mm -hmm. ten thousand forty five square feet, and from eight doctors to twelve doctors. You got it. Second. Liz Sanford, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it's unanimous. We're all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, nice job. Yeah, yeah, good 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 questions, good. right? That was good. I know. Do we have AMG? Or I I've got Bruce's online taking a look, and yeah, so far that it does not appear. Okay. We will continue. Um, all right, we have an application to accept from Honeyman Builders LLC. We need a motion and a second, please. James Ratcliffe, I um, make a motion to accept the application for two lot subdivision of 17 Burlington Road, R20 zone, and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of June 20th, 2022. Second. Liz Sanford, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Next is uh, SignPro Incorporated with a sign application for property located at 32 Main Street. Correct. And we've got Tracy Becker on the phone. And this is Main Street Farmington, right? We've seen Tracy before. Yes. Yes. Correct. <laughs> you have. <laughs> oh, so hang on. Let me just open up these files. We've got seven and eight. Uh, Tracy, go ahead. We've got uh, the 32 Main Street up for you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so as you are aware, um, m and Bank has received to uh, purchase people's in the process of converting all of the United Bank branches to m and Bank branches. And our next two are um, 32 Main Street in Farmington and our next application, which you'll hear in about 10 minutes, I imagine, for 1845 Farmington Avenue in Unionville. 
Um, so for the main street location, we are just changing the freestanding sign panels um, from People's United Bank to a green background, white lettering, yellow border at the bottom for MT Bank. So I think if you go down one, there we go. There it is. So it will look remarkably the same, except it will have the green background and white lettering with the gold um, they call the energy band. So. Oh, I'm sorry. And the, uh, the enter and exit directional signs, we're going to be moving to the inside um, edges of the driveway. Right now, they're both on the outer edges. Um, we're going to be moving them to the inner edges. So there you go. So um, where enter and exit are being shown there with the arrows, we're going to just get them out of the shrubbery and put them where people can actually see them. Um, and it also makes for a, a nice symmetrical view of the front of the building as well. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, commissioners, questions for Tracy. Oh, Matt, excuse me. None, and this seems pretty like for like to me, so no, no questions. Patrick? Yeah, the enter and exit, are they moving forwards and backwards um, from Main Street or side to side when they're coming out of the bushes? Um, they're just going to go move to side. <clears throat> so right now, they're on the edges of the property. They're going to be moving more towards the center of the property, if that makes sense. So, right. so they're in the shrubs now, and they're going to move to the inside edges of the driveways. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so further away from Main Street. Is that correct? Um, so they're not going to move any further back from Main Street. They're just going to be moving left to right if you're looking at the front of the building. Okay. Yeah, to the other side of each driveway. Okay, got it. Yep. Right. So that it's it's in the center island area rather than out on the perimeter edges. Correct. That's a much better way of saying it, Shannon. Thank you. <laughs> no, just a, just a not better, just different. <laughs> it's been a long Monday. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. You said a mouthful. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you No, off. no problem. No, yeah, no more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, historic District had uh, no problems with it, correct? So, Correct. This was approved with the Historic District last okay. Tuesday. That's great. No questions. And James? No questions. Mike? No questions. I am all set also. It seems pretty straightforward. Uh, we need a motion and a second, please. Uh, Liz Sanford. Um, Move that we approve the sign application to change People's Bank sign to MNT Bank uh, at 32 Main Street by Sign Pro Inc. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. We're all set. Unanimous. Next step. Thank you, Tracy. Next application is for the Unionville branch at 1845 Farmington Ave. Correct. Um, so we have a very, very similar app here. We will be changing the to um, the very same panels that you just saw on Main Street. Um, and I believe this location has some pin mount letters on the building, um, similar to what's there now, except they will be bank instead of People's United. So one for one, exactly the same, okay. Exactly, yep. Just the peripheral signage, you know, the clearance signs and things like that at this location. Yep. Okay, thank you. That's it. All right, Matt? No, no questions. Patrick? No questions. Liz? Uh, just out of curiosity, is the ATM going to still be blue or is it going to go green too? Uh, it will go green. Okay. <laughs> Might as well be consistent. Yeah, I believe yeah, the ATM colors are green, green so. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. James? Uh, no questions. Uh, no questions. Okay, awesome. All right, motion and a second, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, Patrick Carrier. I'll, oh, sorry. I'm so you said my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'd like to move to approve the sign application by Sign Pro Inc. at 1845 Farmington Avenue um, from a People's Bank sign to an MT Bank sign. Second, please. Sec um, Go ahead, ladies first. Liz Sanford, second. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. All right, you're all set, Tracy. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Have a great evening. You as well. I know. I, I know. On Zoom, it's always like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you watching this? This is lightning speed. This yeah. is great. <laughs> I know. Um, so Bruce, right. is, Bruce is working to try and track down the um, applicant for the uh, AMG. So uh, is so it okay to start public hearing? Yeah, but okay. once we start, we'll have to finish exactly. what we're in and then just um, check in with them. But I'm not seeing anyone for that AMG application on. So okay. he's going to work on it for us. Yep. Thank you. And thank you, Bruce. All right, everyone. Now we're going to uh, turn oh, to the. Hang on. Oh. All right. Yeah. Okay. I literally just got on. So if we'll go ahead and indulge, just. All right. Do that one. Yeah. He just got her. It would be a long wait otherwise, I think. Right? It would be a long wait. Samantha, if you're ready, we'll take your application now. Yes, I'm sorry about that, guys. No problem. So, AMG retail, right? Uh, it is. So there really isn't a, a so I've got that site plan. So we know where we are at 286. Um, Samantha, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself and explain which, uh, what the request is with your application this evening to the commission. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha Rodriguez. I am the uh, licensing and insurance compliance coordinator for Atlantis. Um, what we're looking to do, we uh, just recently remodeled the location, gave it a little bit more of a modern look. Um, and what we're looking to do is extend our operating hours from what they are currently to a 24 hour operation in town. Okay. Okay. That's all it is, right? It's uh, correct. Uh, correct. Samantha, there's no change. There's no lighting changes. There's no site plan changes. There's no building changes, correct? Nope. All of that was already permitted and actually completed, but this specific application is just for the increase in the hours to 24 hours. And what are your hours today? I, probably uh, I believe they are 5 to 10. 530 to 10. That may be what they're operating. I believe they're approved currently for five to midnight. Yeah. Thank you. I believe that's yes, what they're yes. currently approved for, but that's okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. I don't mind. yeah, I believe, I believe when the COVID pandemic, we decreased our hours just due to um, not having enough employees, but I can clarify, you know, with that, just to make sure that we are, you know, operating the hours of 530 to 10. And then if we are operating to midnight, which I, I don't think we are, but I'm pretty sure it's 5.30 to 10. That's uh, fine. Thank you, that's fine. You don't have to uh, research that we're all set. Um, thank you, uh, Samantha. All right, commissioners, how do we feel about uh, allowing 24 hour operation, Matt? Yeah, just a question for me. So why the increase in hours at this point to go, you know, from, you know, what's happening from 10 a.m. to or 10 p.m. to 5 a.m.? Um, well, to be honest with you guys, I, I think with a lot of our um, many other locations that we own and operate in the New England area, um, many of them are 24 hours. Many of them we did see an increase um, in sales, an increase in amount of people that are changing the hours that they're coming in. Um, you know, whether it's the younger generation, the older generation, a lot of them don't want to come in during business hours because of COVID, because of how busy it is, because of the lifted mask mandate. So it really gives our, our customers a chance to come in at any, you know, any different hours. I'll speak for myself. I know my husband is a, a utility worker and at, you know, three o'clock in the morning when he's on his way home, if he wants a coffee before he comes home to go to bed, it's very hard for him to find a gas station that's open in the middle of the night um, or a Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. So it, it opens the doors to a whole new, um, you know, a whole new perspective for other people, a, a whole new customer, customer line. Um, and it's something that Atlantis really opened up as far as during the pandemic. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm good for now. Thank you. All right. How about you, Patrick? Uh, so, yeah, so I, I was reading through this and there's one other property that uh, is permitted in town, right? 
Correct. Uh, the Cumberland Farms was originally approved for five to midnight, and then their hours were expanded. Uh, they came in just as, as these folks are doing in 2017 to change their hours to 24 hour operation. And again, during COVID, they've redacted those hours. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they've come back to 24 hour at this point of time. We did um, uh, check in with the police department just to see if they had information on something that we didn't happen to have. And it seemed to align that uh, Cumberland had been open 24 hours. They also believe there had been one on Farmington Ave towards Yukon Hospital had been open 24 hours at one point. Uh, but currently none of the gas stations are 24 but they could at any point, the permissions there, so they could change it and go back at any point. Right. And one of the conditions on, on that, so I was reading through here is the, as I understand it, is that deliveries are not allowed, right? Is that uh, correct? Between the, the hours of midnight and 5 a.m.? Correct. Okay. So, I mean, I, is that something that would be an issue? Is my question, I guess. No, okay. we don't typically get deliveries. Our deliveries and our vendors are typically limited to, um, before 7 p.m. That's always been something, even when General Equity, I worked with General Equities and Food Bag prior to Atlantis, uh, when Atlantis took over. Um, that's always been a security measure for us. We're very uh, coherent on that safety measure and we typically uh, lock the doors and we have a security, you know, security policy and procedure in a certain way that um, we let our employees and our customers in and out of the building after a certain hour. I believe it's 9 p.m. we lock our doors and then we buzz them in um, from there. Okay, and I see to the east there's a, an apartment complex. Is that how can, is it visible from the apartment complex? So the apartment complex is off of, so if you're familiar with this portion of Route 10, then this mm -hmm. is the spur going up. To, yeah. to for Route Six, the apartment complex is over here off the edge. It's they're up. It's the apartment complex that okay. is up, so it's quite elevated uh, compared to this oh, yeah. location. So they're, they're seeing street lights and all kinds of. They're they're uh, above it. Okay. Correct. Yeah. No further questions. Thanks. Thank you, Liz. Um, no, I was curious about that. And then the there that other house on the other side of Colt Highway. I know that is also fairly high. And it's there's not any visibility down to that. Is there that number forty five? Is that number forty five? I don't believe so. I just because I think you've. I'm pretty sure Colt Highway. You you go up in the back and then come back down. I don't believe that's, it's the same elevation. Not, yeah. I think there's an elevation change there. Okay. And then once a special permission is granted for these twenty four hours, it's always available for that property owner's use. Uh, correct, unless there's uh, unusual um, problems with it okay. that are requiring, you know, zoning enforcement or other action to be taken, then it can be rescinded, but it would have to be with cause. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's my only question. Thank you. James? No questions. And Mike? No questions. All right. I do not have any new questions either. All right. Um, any final questions for Samantha? We're ready for motion we're good the only thing i would add is, is for the condition if to the to, to deliveries from 12p to 5a i think you just put that in there yeah because okay. i could change uh if it changes ownership just to make it consistent with the other okay. um, yeah, i agree with that property in town. But, not, mm -hmm. but just to put it in there mm -hmm. you, you ready for the motion to i guess motion? i have to do it now <laughs> <laughs> thank you <clears throat> uh, i'd like to make a motion to um, uh, approve the modification of prior special permit for AMG Retail I LLC at 286 Main Street for a special uh, condition of approval to change hours of operation with the condition of prohibiting deliveries between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it's passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now we get to go to the public hearings. Let's see here. All right. Okay, so thank you everyone for your patience. Um, so we have uh, three items that will be coming before us under public hearing portion. Uh, the uh, 
structure is similar to what you've heard already. Uh, the applicant presents to us, commissioners ask questions, and then we turn it over to the public for any comments, questions, concerns. And then if we're satisfied, uh, we close the public hearing and then uh, decide on a vote. So uh, we have one item from Trump Incorporated. It's actually a continuation from last time. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna. Good evening, members of the commission. Uh, for the record, Will Walter, professional engineer with Alfred Benish and Company. I'm the um, engineer of record on the project. With me tonight is Jim Becker. He's the architect on the project. We've got Peter Daniel, who's the owner's, owner's representative, if there's any questions for him. And with us online is Noel Jenkins. He's with uh, bb and &E, and they're the construction managers. So if there's any questions about construction, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer those questions. So uh, yeah, we were here a couple of weeks ago and um, this is a 45,000 square foot, give or take building addition. Um, there were three items of concern the last time we were here. There was the question of the bump out of the building on the north side. and Would that impact the, the existing sidewalk? There was a question of um, the, the cross connection with the main drainage line in Connecticut Waters concerns. And there was also the question of light potentially coming out of the north side of the building. Um, since that last meeting, we have revised our plans. There was probably 25 or so staff comments. Um, we've revised the plans. We resubmitted them to the staff a, a few days ago. They've, they've reviewed those comments. I had a discussion with Bruce Sear today. He has probably three or four additional comments that are very, very minor. And, and uh, we're certainly willing to accept those as conditions. And, and he's, he's willing to do that as well. Um, so I'm going to briefly go through the, the three items that were concerns to this commission, and then we'll be respectfully requesting an approval with conditions. So you can see on the screen, uh, there's the overall site. There's the, in the red highlight is the approximate location of the building addition. Shane, if you go, go to the next slide, please. So now uh, north is to the left in this plan. Uh, it's, it's difficult to see the four foot bump out on the left side, which is the north side um, at this scale. But essentially there's a, there's a four foot bump out for the building there. And, and you can see the green space between, the, between the, the proposed building and the existing sidewalk. And we've got you know, 10 or 12 feet there. So you can see that that existing sidewalk back there is not gonna be impacted by this bump out. That was one of the, the questions we had last time. Go to the next slide, please. So the next thing we, the other thing we talked about was Connecticut water. Uh, I've, I've drawn some highlights in here. The yellow is highlighting the main storm line that flows from the left, which is north, and it flows south, and it takes a few turns and eventually makes its way into the existing detention basin, which is on the right-hand side. I've highlighted in blue and bubbled it. That is the location of our underground infiltration system. Originally, I had a series of dry wells there, but through working with the town staff, we've revised that. Uh, I agree it's a better solution. We've done some test pits out there so we know where groundwater is. We're staying above the groundwater. And essentially, you can see um, where the highlighted blue comes out to the right from that underground infiltration system. That's where it connects to the main storm system. The, where the pipe comes out is probably about six or seven feet above the pipe of that main storm system. We had a great meeting, um, Shannon and Bruce and I with Connecticut Water. Um, we went through everything. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. The town indicated that, that they were okay with not having a backflow preventer, which is something that I, I, thought, I felt it was not necessary. Connecticut Water, uh, agrees that it's not necessary if we can show with a hydraulic analysis of that main pipe that water will never get up to that level. Um, you know, it's, it's probably going to take us a day or two to do that analysis. It's on our docket to do it this week. And so what we're requesting is that if we can show with that hydraulic analysis to the satisfaction of the town and Connecticut water, that there will not be a backup into that infiltration system in the 100-year storm we're requesting that we will not have to put a backflow preventer 
if we can't show that or if our analysis shows that it is going to back up, then, then we'll put a, a backflow preventer on that line and, and just we're requesting that as an approval. If we do have to, we'll work with the town to make sure it's done to their, their satisfaction. And the last thing, Shannon, next slide, please. Um, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Becker come up, and this is a, a view of a rendering of the north side uh, of the building. Hi, Jim Becker, Tecton Architects, um, Hartford, Connecticut. I, I'm working with Barco Leibinger, who is the, uh, the design architect there in Berlin, Germany. And they just wrote up a little, I'll, I'll read what they, a little synopsis of what they had to say about the, um, the window on the north facade. Barco Leibinger, working with Trump campus in Farmington, took, a, took his first step finishing the customer and technology center a freestanding pavilion um, responding to the landscape pond and neighborhood buildings. That was back in like 1999. Given giving industrial facilities and work spaces, human scale and comfort to be a place to work is, uh, is one of the, the key issues of our practice. Plans and facade therefore reflect the use of daylight First, to reduce the use of artificial light during day, uh, during the daylight, or during daytime, sorry, as much as possible. And second, to give humans a good sense of orientation inside the building. Designing the new addition to building two, we went to stay, we wanted to stay with the qualities we developed in our previous projects as campus, on the campus using the same facade materials, window sizes, and keeping the scale of the elevations. Regarding the north facade ex extension, we need to join a full height brick wall <laughs> with a horizontal. So the brick wall is the is the new um, the new addition with a horizontal facade of brick, metal siding, and at the top a window from. Um, the existing building number two. To preserve the architecture of the existing and to split the new form from the old, we think it's necessary to have a gap using a full height window. But this also goes with the minimum benefits of daylight for workspace as mentioned above. So we've, we've talked with um, Trump and this portion of the building will be is in a paint shop. Um, there's an exit door incorporated into this into this window. It's an emergency exit. Um, and this portion of the building will only be a single shift. Um, so, you know, whatever it is, seven to four or something like that. And um, the lights will go out at that time. There won't be any, any daylight coming out of them um, it, for this particular for this particular uh, window. So, anything else, Peter? Or? Sure. Hello, Peter Daniel with Trump. I've been, uh, was it one on 111 High Road? Um, so, yeah. At the north end, as Jim said, that's going to be housing the paint shop. And as of now, we only run one shift um, and it's going to stay the same. And typically, because we like to do, reduce our energy load, we, you know, basically the lights turn off when nobody's around. So in any, in any, of, the, any of the offices and the manufacturing facility, use the lights to come, uh, turn off automatically um, at certain times. So this one, I mean, four o'clock, it may shut off at five o'clock. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but definitely we'll go past, you know, probably like six o'clock. I mean, because it's just, we're just going to waste energy. If nobody's in there, we turn lights off. So same with the parking lot. Yeah. You're all set? All right. Sorry. Um, so like I had said, uh, we're respectfully requesting approval with the, the conditions, the, the few conditions that the uh, that Bruce had um, had mentioned in his memo. Um, and with that, we're more than happy to take any questions at this time. All right. Thank you. All right, Matt. So, yeah, just quick on the, so the window, 
right? It's good for the workers inside the building during the day. You want natural light for them inside. And you're saying this is only a single shift. So the residents who live in the area, there's no light emanating from these windows because no one's going to be there. Is that how to think about this space in the window itself? We're not changing the um, material of the window from last week. You know, we, we did talk about putting a shade up um, and that's still a possibility if that's a condition. Um, we just felt that because they're, you know, it's only going to be a single shift, the lights are going to be turning off, it probably wasn't necessary. No, I mean, I get it from a worker's perspective, the, the natural light inside, just thinking about, you know, even in the winter, right? When it gets, when it gets, um, the sun sets early, just thinking about the, 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 the neighborhood. So I don't know if a shade or I don't know what else thinks, but that, that's an interesting concept. Yeah, because this is really the only natural light coming into that one space. Right. We, we kept the whole other part of it, you know, brick wall. That makes sense. Um, no other questions. Thank you, Mike. Patrick? Uh, is it possible that in the future that it does go from one shift to a double shift? And then it would require lighting, and now that would become an issue? Um, I mean, it's always a possibility, but I would say that the paint shop um, that I've, since I've been there for 20 years, it's been one shift since I've been there. So um, they're increasing capacity. So I find it, it's probably unlikely they're gonna go to a second shift. Okay. The paint shop itself is increasing capacity. Right. So, okay. And then this question I think is for Mr. Walter. Um, you mentioned something about, so the backflow was an issue um, and you mentioned something. So it's an infiltrator system, right? What was it before that? So it was dry wells, a series okay. of open bottom dry wells. Oh, okay. So what's the difference exactly? So the dry wells are about a five foot diameter uh, open concrete structure with holes in the side and stone on the bottom. And they go down about five or six feet. Mm -hmm. I had six or seven of those. Now it's a, it's a half moon plastic system that's open. It sits on stone. Yep. So that whole system is able to come up a little bit higher above the groundwater. I mean, we're always above the groundwater, but it's able to come up. It's more linear and it actually provides more volume and it provides, we're providing greater than that first inch that's falling on the, the rooftop of the building, which is what the staff asked us to do. Oh, okay. So it's not as high. So it's, it's shorter, therefore bringing it up, getting it out of the groundwater. Okay. Correct. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you. All right, Liz. Um, a, a question about those lights. Um, are they on a an automatic automated system where if someone walks into the room, the lights go on, or is it a switch? So um, in all the buildings, there's they're on a timer. Okay. And they go off. Like I work in one of the other buildings, and at uh, usually at like six o'clock, all the lights turn off except for some minimal lighting. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do walk around, they, depending where you are, they will turn on, but in the, in the main manufacturing building, they usually don't. They don't, okay. And so it's not a, a watchman uh, walks through it. No, it's all automated. doing their rounds at midnight and two, and all of a sudden they come on and stay on for 10 no, minutes. No, no, no. And, and okay. there's going to be, usually nobody's going to be going in there at, at after, you know, five o'clock or so. So the shifts are from seven it's actually from 7 to 3.30. That's our first shift. And then you maybe get a little bit over time. So I'd say maybe 4, 4.30, you know. So it's, and everything's automated. We have everything connected. We have a Siemens automation system that controls everything in the buildings. Okay, thank you. No other questions? No. no. Okay. How about you, James? Um, just a more a question for Shannon. Um, if they were to increase to a second shift, and we would more than likely want to have a shade to right. block the light. What, what's the process around that to, to Patrick's question? It, they would increase to a second shift and we probably wouldn't we would know, know about it right. unless there was complaints from the neighbors about the lighting. Yeah, I mean, I don't have, a, I don't have an issue with, the, with there not being a shade as currently presented, but right. if we're not gonna know, you know, but I guess over 20 years, 20 years of experience, maybe it's, it's okay to just roll with it. But I just, I was curious more about the, the process than anything else. Mm -hmm. If there was a complaint, would then we so if there was a complaint then we'd have to follow up with that but i do have a question so is there security so there's other areas of the building and other buildings that there's security lighting that is left on so there's you know not all the lights but security lighting is left on overnight in some of the buildings and there's also cleaning staff that comes in 
and they are in at like nine o'clock at night. And we, so there are other buildings that abut Hyde Road, I think it's building four that, uh, or the training center. How about? Training center is building three. Okay. So that one, it, the lights, we have received calls on a regular basis on that one and have to have been in touch with uh, John Miska on that. Okay. So if there's security, if there's security lighting that will be in and part of that and or cleaning staff, then I think the best way to go is to put the shade in. And the other question I had is this rendering is not clear as to where the window is. I, I can see a, a brick and I can see, is it this small column here? I know. I'm not really sure this this the rendering has an appearance of it's all yeah. all block. Yeah, the brick is the darker piece. Correct. There's a wall. So Correct. The four feet that it extends out from the. That's the block wall, and then this the surface right here. That's the that's the window in question in the door on the bottom of it. Okay. What so it the, does face north. It faces north. It's blocked by this small four foot wall, but it does yeah. this. So it's that portion. How wide is that? It's seven feet wide. Okay. So seven foot wide glass from ground to roof. Yes. Okay. No more questions. All right. How about you, Mike? No questions. All right. Um, we talked about uh, planting buffer, right? That's not changing. So we one of the things that was confusing last time was whether or not we have the feet the 15 17 feet or like i know mike uh, grabul has mentioned that he drives there or has been there and he didn't feel like we had the space i was that confirmed that we believe had? that what's being referred to hang on a second so yeah. hang on let the computer regenerates here I believe that was this area. So the the distance between the existing edge of building, which you can see back here, and the sidewalk edge. Do your so cursor again, because we can't see it really good over here. Sorry. So the existing edge of building. Yeah. Sidewalk. Yeah. Oh. Not so small. Existing edge of building yeah. and sidewalk. And the new edge of building is out four feet. And so it's just four feet this way. Yep. So your sidewalk is not being. It's not impacted. Right. So okay. there's, if there's, there's most of the glass are mm -hmm. All right. And um, let's think about this. Uh, I think uh, it's the, the lighting, right? We know which way it's facing. We know how far it's coming out. Um, yeah, so we do have this pretty significant window on the west, okay, on west north. Um, and uh, Shannon, that um, you and Bruce are comfortable with the hydro test. And uh, we are uh, fine with that condition that if the hydraulics support that the backflow preventer is not needed, then then that's fine. It does not need to be installed. Okay. And uh, applicant can work with town staff. Town staff and CT water. Okay. All right. Um, I am all set with my questions. Sorry about the way they came out. But uh, all right. Since this is a public hearing, um, Shannon, if you can reach out to people online also, but um, uh, this is the time where the public can come in front of us and ask questions of the applicant, make comments in favor or opposition of this project. Okay, I'll ask for anyone that has called in online, if anyone wishes to speak regarding this application, please raise your hand using Zoom, uh, the feature in Zoom, and you will be identified to address the commission. Yeah. Madam Chair, there are no hands raised. Okay. And just make sure we ask for anyone present. Yes, I'm know. sorry. Sorry, Anyone please. present? Uh, do you have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. I'm getting sh uh, head shakes. Head nods, yes. Yeah, so okay. I'm good with that. Before I close the public hearing, commissioners, any final questions? 
Shannon, can you just show us on the, the GIS the, the yeah. parcel again? Of course. Thank you. Um, and then I'm, I'm good after this. Okay. Stay out, right? So Johnson Ave, Hyde Road, New Britain Ave coming into the top at Hyde. So this is the building in question with the expansion area being located in this vicinity next to basically the, where the number one is on the screen is where the expanded building will be located. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, well, I'm just going to say a follow up to that. And so the, I'm a little turned around. So Hyde Road is to the north. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I see. So then it's across like the New Britain Avenue area. That's where how there are um, private houses, correct? Correct. There's some residents to the north in this area. Okay. But up further. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's one right at the intersection. There is one right at the intersection of New Britain and High. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Yes, when as I saw you reading, Tony, yeah. so have yeah. these been all addressed here? Sorry, the comments you have. Yes. I know we need. Yeah. I was going to. So the items for consideration? Yep. Okay, confirm there are no. So, um, Mr. Walter, do you want to? We're just going to run through these. Yeah, that's fine. I, I wasn't sure if you already had the results. No, I think we've already, but just for the record, uh, confirm there are no changes to the existing planting buffer along Hyde Road. Correct. Confirm construction sequence and designated construction material storage area. I'm going to go back to your PDF. Technical skills are a little lacking to me. <clears throat> there we go. So, construction sequence and designated construction storage area. I believe this, we had construction storage down in this vicinity, correct? Correct. To the south of the construction zone. There'd be nothing, no construction storage and no construction activity to the north of the building. Correct. Okay. Uh, construction materials, so that's uh, the second one. Construction materials shall not be stored in such a manner as to impact the root system for the buffer along Hyde Road. Correct. Construction dumpsters shall be located to the south of the existing building. Correct. Confirm no additional lighting on the north side of the building, so there's no exterior building lights. Correct. Okay. Uh, it says confirm, confirm no windows on the north side of the building. We've already noted that there's one seven foot wide window, um, so we're set there and then address engineering comments to the satisfaction of the town engineering department. I'd just leave that as a condition, um, if you would, please. And uh, then Bruce and I can finalize all those elements. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. You no more questions? Yep. Thank you. Perfect. All right. You have one more? No, no I'm good. good. Okay. So, all right. At this point, I will close the public hearing on the application from Trump Incorporated. All right, um, let's see here. Uh, we need a motion before discussion, right? Correct. So yes, we please. need a motion and a second, please, before we discuss. And then we could add the conditions after. Uh, or you can no. add them. You're welcome to add them as part of your motion, if yeah. you would like to. Well, I'll just comment. I think I think maybe we'll all agree, I assume, with the, the engineering comments and the hydraulic report. Like, we want that. I'm not sure. I don't know where we're at with the wind, the window, and how to think about shading or not. That's right? Discussion, right? That's part of discussion. Yeah. That's okay. part of discussion. Yeah, right? yeah. that, oh, okay. Because yeah. that's what I was going to say. Perfect. That's so, fine. Yeah. Yeah. So you can always amend the. So you can make the motion, discuss, and then amend the motion, and, that, and then right. a second, and that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sounds like it's coming from this side. Yeah, <laughs> they're working on it. I see the notes over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, so I make a motion to approve the application for special permit um, for site, <clears throat> for special permit for site plan approval for Trump Inc. Um, for expansion of manufacturing building in a CR zone. Second. 
second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought we were going to okay. do the And now this, well, discussion. Okay. Let's let's talk about this. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know we have gone longer than this. What is going on? <laughs> it's fun. All right. So uh, definitely, we had some questions about the lighting or the pollution or neighbors. Right. One of, one of the charges we have as commissioners is to to think about the impacts to neighborhood. Do we want to condition um, the window? Some kind of shade or I, what? I, yeah, I, I, I just think yeah, it's I, know. I say, yeah, Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I think I'm, I'm leaning that way. It's not like the applicant was open to that. And I think uh, we can shade it for those after hours, especially here in New England in the winter. It gets dark. Mm -hmm. It's uh, dark at four o'clock. So I, I'm comfortable with that. So this would be like after five, like what, what would that look like? After, they mentioned that um, after six, technically, right? Nobody would be in that area, but do we want to do it sooner? I mean, I think if the shade isn't installed, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. it's open and there's no complaints. I mean, if there is a complaint, they'll probably use a shade that's already installed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fine. It just has that's to okay. be installed. That'll show on the building plans. We'll see it and that's fine. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. so. Yep. So I'm comfortable with that. Basically, it needs to be activated after sunset, right? It needs to be activated sunset to sunrise if there's going to be lighting in the building. Right. And if there's no lighting, it's it's open. The reason it's not exactly. Open. So, yep. so that, that seems like a very reasonable okay. uh, a reasonable idea because I could just imagine, as I said, you know, if someone walks in there and the whole place lights up, and that's a lot of light. Mike, you're good with this position? Uh, I think putting the shade in is acceptable. I'm not a huge fan of telling them how to operate it at the moment. I, I like having the shade, and we can always go back to it if Shannon ultimately feels a complaint, but I don't support necessarily putting restrictions of when they use it or do not. Um, again, if the commission wants to go differently, I could be swung. Yeah. I mean, we did hear that there have been <coughs> complaints in the past on a different building, right? On a different building that's closer to Hyde Road. Yes, I and it's used more as an office space as a training unit. Okay. So there's, so more there's a lot more staff space. and lights. And, yeah, it's okay. a different different function for that building. But I am in support of having the shade okay. in the construction documents. Are we good with just the shade or do we need to do the sun set sunlight? No, I'm good. Shade is good? Yeah, okay. I think so. All right. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, I agree. I think if you get the shade installed, I think that is it's there and then... And I'll say this too. I mean, I don't didn't necessarily anticipate many complaints coming either way, just because of where the location is. You know, when you look pull up the GIS, it looks like the the residential area is a little bit further away. Um, so just having the shade there will be good, just in case we do get complaints, and they can they already have it installed, and we're in good shape. There's a yeah something in place exactly. All right, and then uh, we talked about uh, engineering comments being possibly part of the. Motion, yep. everyone good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. yes, thank you. And then uh, the hydraulic, excuse me, hydraulic analysis, um, we, are we including that in yeah. the motion? The, okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I did not hear anything else. No, we're good. We're good. No. All right. <laughs> Patrick, would you like to modify that? Yeah. So, All right. Whew. So I will amend my motion uh, to include the following conditions that the applicant provide a hydraulic analysis proving that the storm water will not back up um, in a hundred year storm in order for the backflow to be eliminated, I guess. And then uh, second condition, a shade be installed on any window on the north side of the building, which a seven foot one is proposed. Um, and, that all, and that all engineering comments are addressed to the satisfaction of the town engineering department prior to building permit. Okay, what was my second? Second. <clears throat> ready to vote? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Thank you for coming back. We appreciate uh, the clarification. Thank you. Okay, no, that was good. And you took your time. It was perfect. All right. Um, the next public hearing uh, item in front of us is an application for 14 hands from Amber and Michael Spirito. Are you, oh, you're here? Okay, great. Come on, come on up. If you can um, identify yourself, give us your address. Thank you. And thank you for your patience. Sorry, you had to sit through. Hello, uh, Michael Amber Spirito at 7 Orchard Road. Okay, thank you. So uh, we wanted to get an application for some hens. Uh, this way, 
we don't have neighbors complaining. So. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have like a, a picture where they're gonna like be or? Um, or it's in here? Okay. So yeah, we just did a little layout. So give a backstory. Um, we moved from Newington, uh, I don't know, like five years ago. And we had hens there, just moved the coop there. Didn't know Farmington had any restrictions. So we had a neighbor, um, she had chickens. Someone complained with her. She went through the process and then she called on us. So, um, so I ended up getting rid of them because it was in the middle of December. And uh, I was like, oh, you know, with the holidays coming up. So now five years later, because I had the coop back there and everything. So five years later, my kids got a little older and they're like, they wanted chickens and they're eating a lot. So <laughs> I figured I could save us. Sorry. Eggs, so. All right. So, all right. So you, uh, your request is um, for us to allow 14 hens mm -hmm. and you already have a coop. Yes. Okay. Enclosed or? Yep. All enclosed. Okay. It, it, the coop is actually, it's all enclosed. They stay in the coop. And then there's another fence back there because we have a whole pool, but they don't roam. They're in, in there. The other fence around the coop is kind of keep the predators away. So it's like a double protection. Uh, I don't think there's okay. photos I could bring up. I can yeah, bring up. sorry. We didn't, we didn't. The aerial, so seven more Yeah, just the yeah, location will be good. Thank you. We're oh, right. We're, names are coming on. Yeah, we're right against Route Nine. Like, okay. are we right back? Here, up? Right? Yep. That's up. Correct. Okay. Yep. The top of it. This one. Yep. Right where that. Yes. Yep. Without Let's street see. names or a number. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> the number. The street names weren't showing up. Uh, for me. So now they. Now they. So are. yeah, you can see the pool in the back, and then, uh, well, yep, that's the coop. So it's maybe from front to back. You know, the long way, maybe fifteen <laughs> feet. Uh, long and four feet wide. Okay. All right, we're good. Yep. Okay. That's all right, uh, commissioners. Questions. Um, Matt. Um, could you, uh, could you just one more time describe the chicken coop to me again? So it's a um, so it's about fifteen feet wide. Okay. Um, twelve or long. I'm sorry, long. Right. Um, maybe twelve of it is a run. So it's all open and they have the run and the rest of it, uh, whatever, is all enclosed. So they go up there at night to roost. Got it. Okay. So. And uh, we'd just be using the eggs for personal use? Oh, yeah. And selling. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know it's a lot of chickens, but in the past, like, I've always got 12 and then, like, three of them die before they even get older. So that's why I just shot for 14 and see how many survive that was my other question is how do you how do you pick 14 yeah, yeah. got it yeah, like yeah. i wanted 12 you know so to get like maybe a dozen a day but, yeah okay so got it that's it no 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 additional questions all yeah. right how about you patrick uh so you you were mentioning that one of the neighbors was complaining right yeah uh yeah not uh, complaining not, she, she she had chickens in the neighborhood they were running the whole neighborhood so, and I don't know, I, I came to the meeting like five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, this woman has a lot of complaints against her. Mm -hmm. So she just likes to complain on everyone else. So um, she never kept her chickens in the coop and they went to another neighbor's yard on the other side. I had no problems with her chickens because mm -hmm. I had chickens. I was like, I don't care. Right. Um, they went in her yard and her dog, I think, killed one. They, they were greyhounds mm -hmm. and um, they're, you know, prey dogs. So mm -hmm. um, that was the issue with that neighbor so he called to complain and then she turned around because i think she thought i complained so but she still owns a house next to us uh she rents it oh okay so now so one one of the houses that we see in the picture to the right or no? uh yeah to the right okay mm -hmm. yep so it's documented in the agenda review for you What's that? It's in the agenda review. Oh, it is? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. No, but just so, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily put two and two together, but it's the same right. residence that's noted in the timing in the agenda review. Okay. Um, and then, um, so so she, she was not really complaining, you know, over... No, not you know, at all. She, she just turned around. Something and else in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I got caught. I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. No, other than that, no hens. 
Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. no roosters. No roosters. <laughs> no roosters. I don't own chickens, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd yeah. be honest with you, we had a rooster the last time that we, when we got the small chickens mm -hmm. and I ended up getting rid of it, you know, cause someone we, we knew had a farm and she's like, oh, I'll take it. I'm like, good. So despair, get, you know, really getting rid of it. So that she took it. So. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Liz questions. Um, a question. How tall is the coop? Um, like six yeah it's enough for i'm a short guy so it's enough for me to walk in uh -huh. and then slope down where then i can't walk. So oh okay it may be only like six foot tall in the front okay. and it slopes back towards my pool okay so it's open on the neighbor side okay and so then they get mm -hmm. to romp and play in there and yeah, yeah. All the oh yeah they can find. Yep. Okay. my one comment is if you get all those 14 chickens start giving eggs to your name i know that's the yeah. way to make except fun. for one <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay um great question great question all right liz you all set i am all set all right james <laughs> no questions and mike no questions yeah. and um how do you dispose of like waste and you have a uh it will compost it and i have yeah. a garden um okay. on the, the left side of my property that's a garden area so um okay that's what it's going to be fertilizer all right all right um this is a thank you all right uh this is a public hearing um so if there's anyone um on the line <coughs> shannon that wishes I'll, to speak in I'll favor check. opposed certainly Sorry. Yep. uh so good evening if anyone has called into zoom to speak regarding this matter for seven orchard please raise your hand using the feature in zoom and you will be acknowledged to address the commission again if anyone's called in from the public to speak regarding seven orchard road Please raise your hands using the feature in Zoom. Um, we, there's nothing. It is very quiet, Madam Chair. All right. And I'm assuming there's equally quiet here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I yeah. thought your neighbor was going to show up. <laughs> I, I oh my gosh. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> at this point, I'm going to close the public hearing. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Need a motion and a second, please. Make a motion uh, to accept uh, the application for special permit to raise 14 hens for property located at 7 Orchard Road in R20 zone by Amber and Michael Spirito. Go ahead and I'll second. All right, discussion. Great idea. Enjoy All right. your is, there, is there a need for the conditions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, you know, oh no I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. For Forgot about the condition. No, no, that's okay. So yeah, so fourteen. But um, mm -hmm. I know in the past, and I I don't know, uh, Shannon, if it makes sense. I know we have uh, zoning uh, enforcement officials, but uh, we typically would. Okay, sorry, I'm like hearing things. We typically would put like a one year um callback if there's anyone complaining. You guys want to do that? I mean, is that? pretty much done that on every but so, i don't so. think it's i just want to say we did that before but we have the process in place right if there's a problem Co correct yeah, so, so the probably. zoning enforcement happens organically if it's needed um generally it's either neighbors or our animal control officer gets in touch with us so i don't really think that one year is necessary but, but no the condition the no roosters and the limits of 14 would be helpful yeah sure yes. do you so you're good no roosters, 14 chickens? Yes. Okay, you can just modify your sure. motion. Sorry, thank you. I'd like to modify my motion um, to add the conditions that there shall be no roosters and that sh there, sh there shall no be, be no more than 14 chickens hens at one time. What was my second? Liz was. Uh, second. All right. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, you are all set. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. That fee is just one, one time. Yes, it's one time. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. You're all yes. set. Thank You'll you. get a letter Enjoy. from Sandy okay. um, finalizing the approval. Okay. Thank and then you. thanks for coming thanks in. Thanks very much. <laughs> the same. Yeah. About. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. You need, yeah, you need a new hobby. Thank you. <laughs> all right, are we all set?
Janet, yeah. Oh, uh, we got one more. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, we're all set, but we do have yes. one more. Yeah, yeah. All right, so <laughs> then we're truly all set. You're right. Yes, I, yep. Okay. Um, yes, yep. I'll, I'll mention it also. Thank you. So uh, the last public hearing item in front of us is an application from Patricia Revel and David Donaldson. It's for an expansion of a home at 17 Pinnacle Ridge Road. And Liz is uh, recusing herself from this application. And uh, I'm assuming someone online is online. Excuse me. Uh, yes, okay. Bill Revel is on. Okay. So. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yep, go ahead. You can introduce yourself. Uh, your uh, business address is fine for the record. And then I've got your presentation slides up on the screen. I'm happy to screen uh, scroll through them as you're ready. Great. Thanks, Shannon. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Reville with Winslow Architects out of uh, 89 Massachusetts Avenue, Arlington, Massachusetts. Um, and I'm presenting on behalf of Patricia Reville and David Donaldson uh, with their expansion of their home at 17 Pinnacle Ridge Road. If you want to just go to the next slide. Thanks, Shannon. So the existing house is a kind of mid-century modern house. It's 1,500 square feet with a detached garage that's just shy of about 600. Yeah, right where the cursor is. 600 square feet. And you can see the existing line that goes through the property kind of, yep, right where Shannon's highlighting, um, is the 75 foot setback ridgeline protection zone uh, setback. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll see what we're proposing. So what we're hoping to do is expand the existing garage to hold three cars and connect it to the house so that the residents don't need to go outside after they park their car to go back inside. And while we're doing that, we're hoping to add a second story of usable space. You know, it's a pretty small house, it's 1500 square feet. So that overflow space will serve you know, their four kids when they come to visit. Um, Pat is an avid yogi, so it's a yoga studio as well. Um, and then an office. Uh, out the back, you'll see a deck that we're proposing to take advantage of the great views. Um, and what's highlighted in red is the area that you know sits within the 75 foot setback zone. And in the kind of paler color, they're hoping to take overflow storage space uh, and kind of screen it behind there. So there'd be a pad beneath the deck. Um, so impervious surface wise. So that's what the calculations in red represent per zoning bylaw 26.1.A. Um, there's a provision that less than 40% of the area within the 75 and 150 foot setback be uh, impervious surface and we're way beneath that, you know, prior to and with the additions. So you can see the percentages there. We've got um, percentage of proposed plus existing impervious area within the 150 foot setback zones, 11.2% up from the existing 10.2 because, you know, this provision was made after this existing house was here. And, and like I said, within that 75 foot buffer zone. Um, so that, that uh, the next slide has, I think, elevations for you guys to take a look at what we're proposing. Our floor plans, you know, here's the garage, pretty straightforward with storage area in the back. That's the pad in the back where they wanna put wheelbarrows and ladders. Here's the studio floor plan with office. It's, Pretty straightforward, a pretty open space. And then this is the roof plan, I doubt you guys are too concerned with that. And then here's the elevation. So it's a pretty modern addition, um, but we didn't really wanna mess with the original aesthetic of the kind of mid-century deck home. So we took a more modern approach to the new structure. And I think that should round it out. So I would uh, be happy to answer any questions you guys have. All right, thank you. All right, Matt, questions? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's several staff comments. So I'm, I'm not sure just how to address those. Or Sh Shannon, should we? Yeah, we actually, we're gonna do this the easy way. The <laughs> calculations to yeah. be, you know, all that. No, so um, Mr. Ravel had sent me an email earlier today running through. He copied them in and put them in in red. Uh, it just it didn't arrive really in time oh, to share with you folks. So um, let's, just, let's, just, let's just run through them sure. to get it on yeah. the record. Sure. So the first, 
first one is the calculation using the 150 foot setback envelope and the 75 foot envelope, which is the impervious coverage, um, which we just he just reviewed. Um, so that was the calculations. He just reviewed the 11% and the 10%, and that was within the 150. So that's compliant. Um, and then Mr. Ravel, confirm no tree removal, please. Kirk confirmed. There's one by Burnham shrub that you see there. They're going to relocate to a lower plant bed, but it's there's no tree removal. Okay. Uh, um, number three, confirm compliance with section G one through five. Confirmed. Um, item one, staff item, uh, staff comment, item one, 26 F6 is consideration for the commission when reviewing a special permit. It does not change the setback to 75. That's really an FYI for you. The building's already in the 75. And so he did add the 150 foot to the application. Uh, the 150 foot is the regulatory limit. The 75 when it's an existing lot or um, either an existing lot of record or an existing home on an existing lot where this ridgeline protection came in after the fact, right? Then the commission has some flexibility with how they um, implement the regulation. Uh, regardless, it, it complies and it is with this provision, it allows that work within the, the 75 foot area. Okay. Um, item two was items one through three still need to be submitted. We've just discussed those above. Uh, with respect to item three, the plans indicate that these are compliant. However, the applicant should confirm. He already just confirmed. Show the 150 foot ridgeline protection setback. It's shown on the plan we just reviewed. Shift addition to the east to avoid impact to the root system to the 40 inch white oak. The drip line of the tree is within the footprint of the deck and the building addition. Mr. Ravel, could you address that, please? Sure. So um, while we would love to shift it as far away as possible, we're kind of hedged in with the amount of available land that we have to put this three-car garage, A, back on top of the existing foundation so as to minimize the disruption to the existing property. But also, when we designed this, we were really you know, out there looking around at everything, planning out the size of the deck. And we thought that it would be a great actual feature to have part of the oak hang over the deck as a natural shading device. Um, so between trying to minimize the footprint of the addition itself while ensuring that it can fit in the staircase and the three-car garage and trying to take advantage of the oak as a shading device, we um, positioned that, the addition as we did. Right, so based on that, it sounds like the foundation, there isn't foundation excavation, the deck overhangs into where the, the drip line is of the tree, but the building itself does not, is that correct? Correct, as far as we could tell, yes. Okay. Uh, next item was tree protection fence shall be installed at the drip line of the oak to avoid construction stockpiling in this area. Correct, that'll be provided. Thank you. Seven, perimeter erosion control shall be included, silt fence and silt sock. Erosion control along the eastern edge of the work shall be installed prior to the start of excavation, not solely in the event of rain. Correct, that'll be provided. Okay, number eight, site plan shall reflect all site improvements, including the patio stairs for the deck, the new driveway to align with the garage and removal of driveway encroachment onto neighboring property to the south. Yeah, we will um, be working through the plans to further develop them and we'll make sure to include all of this, definitely. Okay, so item eight could be a condition of approval. Yeah. Uh, as with the tree protection fence, item six. Studio above the garage shall be for personal use only. Classes of any kind require a separate special permit. Correct. Okay, and that should be a condition of approval if the commission is so inclined. Or have this. Excuse me? Thank you for having this document. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Well, thank wow. you to the applicant yeah. for putting yeah. it in writing and answering thank everything in writing was helpful. helpful. Yeah, it was very, very helpful. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, so back to questions. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have any questions. I mean, that was, we went through all of that. Yeah. That was really good. Okay, um, definitely answered a lot of my manuals at my phone. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, okay, no, I'm just, it's, it's good. Those 
questions? What do you um, No, I, I think it's been lots of the concerns. Of oh, I'm going to, sorry. But I can't yes, no, recused. No, that's right. So there's no comment. Recused, recused. Sorry. Sorry. Nothing at all. Thank you. Oh, Zip it. Woo! That wasn't good. Sorry. You erase whatever you need to erase. Thank you. Sorry yeah. about that. No, uh, no questions. No questions. Like, okay. Wow. Thank you, Shannon, for being here. Um, I do have one more question, though. No. So when you say, when we do make the motion, can we say as presented, seeing that we went through item by item and he... Sure. Sandy and I will articulate it in writing for the condition. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Patrick is in a hurry tonight. No, no, it's not that. I just want to no, it's a, it, it's, it's a lot, but uh, it is in writing already, and we did get the applicant. Correct. To uh, accept. Verbally, yeah. verbally commented on each of them. Correct. Thank you, Sandy and Shannon. All right. Um, I do not have any uh, new questions, so let's turn it over to the public. Is there anyone online that wishes to speak in favor or opposition of this application? So if anyone's called in to speak regarding this matter, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom. No, Madam Chair, there are no hands raised. And um, I will note for the record that there's no one from the public uh, with interest in this application this evening in person. All right. Any last minute questions for the applicant? We're good? Okay. All right. The public hearing portion is closed right now. And I need a, a motion and a second before discussion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the application for a special permit for expansion of home in the Ridgeline Protection Area for property located at 17 Pinnacle Ridge Road, R40 Zone by Patricia Ravel and David Donaldson. As, as presented? As presented. Yes. Okay. And a second, please. Second. Okay. Discussion. We're good with what we got. Yeah. So. Pretty straightforward. Applicant was Okay. All right, we're ready to vote. Okay, all in favor of this application? Aye. Aye. All right, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Revel, for staying on the line. Thank you all. all. Have yeah. a great evening. Thank you. You too. And uh, thank you, Sandy and Shannon again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, planner's report or actually approval. You want me to do the minutes and then you'll- There's, there's no planner's report, um, no formal planner's report okay. for this evening. Thank you. And um, the final um, item in front of us is um, the approval of minutes from May 9th. Who would like to make a motion and second? I'll make a motion. To approve the minutes of the May 9th, 20, two, excuse me, 2022 Town Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.